What's up guys, I got a brand new video for you today and guess what, it's here. The 14 inch MacBook Pro, this is the base model and I'm gonna prove to you why you only need the base model because 98% of you guys are not even gonna be doing what I'm about to show you in this video. Plus stay tuned for the end because uh, we got a special unboxing experience. This is a really, really high ticket, valuable item and you're gonna wanna stay tuned to the end to watch it. But let's get this out of the box. All right, let's jump right in here. We're gonna take a look at the M1 14 inch MacBook Pro base model. 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gig storage. It's got the eight core CPU, 14 core GPU. I just kind of want to prove that the majority of people watching this video don't need anything more than the base model. I saw people on Twitter bragging about how they got the full maxed out $7,000 MacBook Pro to edit 8-bit footage. Come on. I was showing last year on the M1 Mac Mini you could edit 8K video, Red Raw video, H.265, 4K video is a breeze on it. Basically anything I threw at the M1 Mac Mini it could handle. The only difference is that if you had lots of layers of video and like tons of color grading and effects, that's when it started to lag up. And so I wanna see if this thing can handle it. It's got a 14 core GPU, so it's almost double what was in the Mac Mini. I'm gonna stop talking. We're gonna load up a project here. This is just gonna be a Resolve project. It's Red Raw 6K. It's a full music video, full color graded. I wanna see if this thing can handle it because I know the Mac Mini probably couldn't. And this is just gonna run off a regular USB-C M.2 SSD. All right, so this is my first time taking a look at this. And so I don't know what type of performance we're gonna get out of it. So just to show you the project settings, we're running at uh, 4096 by 2160. So this is 6K, just down res to 4K. And this is fully color graded. If we go to the color wheel here, you can see I've got LUTs and some of my corrections on here. And basically, let's just see if it'll play back. Keep in mind, I'm also screen recording at the same time. I don't know if that's why we have a loss in power, but let's see. I'm gonna open up activity monitor here while it's running. Take a look at the RAM. We're currently using 10 gigs of RAM, 10.7 gigs of RAM, but this is still playing in the background. It hasn't lagged out at me. We're running full 24 frames per second. Some of these video clips are actually shot in 48 frames per second for slow-mo. I also have noise reduction on this as well. So as you can see, we've got some noise reduction and that's also playing back on it. So we've got color grading, 6K raw, and noise reduction, all playing back on this, which is crazy. You can see we can adjust some of these settings here on the fly and it's still gonna play back no problem. Here, I guess if we went full screen. Oh, I'm seeing one glitch already. So where the notch is up here, you can see the desktop behind it. So I guess Resolve hasn't been updated to fix the notch yet. I didn't actually even notice the notch. Oh, that's kind of weird too. Your cursor goes behind it. <laughs> see, where'd my mouse go? I thought they said it was gonna go under it. So I switched to DaVinci Resolve at the start of this year because I just like the performance. I love the color grading. Everything about DaVinci Resolve is amazing. And I also got the speed editor. This is the speed editor here. It's just fast, make faster cuts and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. Wow. Can't believe it's playing back this smooth. That's crazy. Especially when we go full screen. I wonder if I should plug a monitor into it and feed a 4K monitor and see what that does as well. Playing back smooth. Let's see what happens when I go 4K with it. Again, perfectly smooth. So it's staying charged at the top here, which means the monitor is actually still charging the laptop, which means you could charge the laptop off USB or off MagSafe. You got both ways of charging, which is pretty cool, because then you can do the one cable thing where you just have one monitor plugged into the laptop, charging it and feeding the video signal. So when I tested Premiere last year on the M1, it just ran like absolute garbage, and that's because Premiere really wasn't updated to run on it, so I'm really curious to see how far Adobe's come with this stuff. All right, so Premiere's open now. I'm gonna throw some stuff at it. We got some H.265 4K video here. We've got some Canon R5 8K footage. I've got some Sony ProRes RAW footage as well. So I'm gonna throw some H.265 stuff down in the timeline first and just see how well it plays. Let's take a chunk of this and just drop it down. And this is Sony A7 IV footage shot in 60 frames per second, 4K. And I'm gonna slow this stuff down, why not? We'll slow it down a bit to see how it plays back. We're at full quality, no drop frames, but that's pretty easy. Let's stack, let's stack a couple clips here. 
So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six layers of H.265 4K footage playing back smoothly off of an SSD. No drop frames. So I have a feeling that Premiere has been optimized a bit, especially if you're working with H.265. And that's uh, six layers of footage. So let's try something like some R5 AK footage. I don't know how many people are shooting AK footage, but let's drop some AK footage down in the timeline here. So this is a new sequence that's just 8K. So you can see we're playing back at 7680 by 4320. 24 frames per second. Okay, so let's stack another clip on top of this. Let's add another layer on top of that. Also playing back smooth. So this is now four layers of 8K Canon R5 footage. And it looks smooth to me. And this is an 8K timeline. So let's try something like, I don't know, like a little zoom here. And maybe I'll add some color to that as well. Four layers, 8K, 8K timeline, color grading with some zooms. <laughs> and it looks like it's playing back fine. It might have dropped one frame there. But the thing is, I'm playing back a full quality. So what if we went to half quality? Playing back perfect. So it's looking like with most of these editors that if you're shooting higher resolution stuff like ProRes RAW or just RAW video in 8K and stuff like that, as long as you drop your quality, like your playback preview window to about half quality, there's literally no drop frames, it's gonna run smooth. And I'm okay working in that because it's just a tiny little window you're working off anyway. It's not like it's gonna change anything. So I think that like, like I said, you pretty much only need the base MacBook Pro to do this stuff. So I got three layers of ProRes RAW stacked on top of each other with color grading. We're at half quality here and it's looking super smooth, no drop frames. This is amazing. So I've been editing this entire video on the M1 MacBook Pro 14 inch. Just got it hooked up to my keyboard and monitor and everything and it's been so smooth. I shot everything in H.265 but just like the editing experience has been really good. I just wanted to jump in here and say that. Back to the video. So it's looking like Premiere has massive updates. Do I go back to Premiere? I don't even know if I go back. I left because it was running so bad and now I'm kind of in the Resolve and I like Resolve. Uh, let's take a look at the SD card reader and uh, we'll wrap up this video. I've got a really fast Sony UHS-2 card reader which is what I usually use to offload my footage. I'm gonna take the card out of that camera and start transferring all the footage that we shot today onto this through the SD card reader and then we'll try it on just an external SD card reader and see if it's any faster. I'm gonna copy this 150 gig file off the SD card onto the hard drive. Three, two, one, go. All right, so just finished. Nine minutes and 16 seconds. That didn't seem very fast. I'm pretty sure that this SD card reader is gonna go a little bit faster. nine minutes and 51 seconds off the Sony UHS-2 card reader through USB-C. That means the card reader built into the laptop is actually a little bit faster. All right, so what did we learn today? We learned that this 14 inch MacBook Pro, the base model, the like cheapest of the cheap MacBook Pros you can get right now, starts at around 2000 bucks, I think, which obviously isn't that cheap. But if you're doing serious work like I am, this is still cheap because the most highest end one is like six to $7,000. So what we learned today is that you can get away with just getting the cheapest base model of MacBook Pro. So the M1 Pro chip, the eight core with 14 core GPU and edit pretty much anything. And so I think that I personally though would wanna go up a few steps in the GPU just to see what we could get out of it. Because I do know that if I wanted to edit like higher end stuff, like 8K raw video, I'd probably want a better GPU. That said, most of you guys aren't editing 8K, 6K raw video. So this thing's gonna be able to do anything you want. If you're just doing photo editing, Lightroom, Photoshop, some light video editing, most people are just shooting 8-bit 4K video. This thing's gonna edit 4K video, no problem. Um, obviously it's thicker. It's got all the ports. You've got three USB type C Thunderbolt ports. We've got HDMI and an SD card reader, as well as MagSafe. It's a little bit thicker, but I think that it makes up for it with all the extra ports. This is kind of what we've been wanting for a long time. New keyboard's awesome, screen's great. I'll obviously get into more detail when I do my full review, but thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. 
don't forget to hit that notification bell and I'll see you guys in the next one. Baby, it's you.